So let's talk about the preparation of an amide. So to begin, let's review. What's an amide? What's the general structure of an amide? We have a carbonyl group that is directly attached to a nitrogen containing group. And those could be hydrogens or those could be alkyls. So we have R's all around, but that's the amide functional group. It has to have this right here. Before we do that though, let's talk about how esters are prepared. Let's review that. And the reason for that is we're going to see some overall similarities between those two processes. And so if you can remember how an ester was prepared, which we learned about in chapter 14, that's going to help you then in talking about how an amide is prepared. So an ester is prepared in one of three ways. We can react a carboxylic acid with an alcohol in a pretty reversible reaction to get an ester and then water as the product. Notice the similarity between the functional group of an ester and the functional group of an amide. The difference really is just what that type of element is. We could also react an acid chloride with an alcohol to get an ester and then a kind of logical byproduct, the HCl, or we could react a carboxylic acid anhydride. Remember, anhydride means without water. So it's essentially like two carboxylic acids that are reacted together by the removal of a water molecule between them. So they're joined by this one, one single oxygen. So we can react that anhydride with an alcohol to again make an ester, and then the, the, the natural byproduct of that reaction. So these are different ways that esters are prepared. What we're going to see is there's going to be kind of an overall similarity in that amides can be prepared with these carboxylic acid derivatives as well. We don't really prepare an amide using that carboxylic acid group up here just due to the fact that they're far more likely to um, just neutralize each other rather than, so we're, so we're not gonna be looking at that one, we're gonna be focusing on these two. So let's take a look then at how amides can be prepared through reacting with an acid chloride or reacting with an acid and hydride. So a couple things I want to kind of comment on or draw your attention to. So you'll notice here it says ammonia or an amine rather than just like, okay, an amine. So uh, ammonia, NH3 in this example, is inorganic. It doesn't have any carbon group. So this is inorganic, but it can be used to generate this organic amide because now it does have a carbon group. Or we could have an actual amine which would have a really similar structure except at least one of our hydrogens, maybe more, have been replaced with um, carbon groups or alkyl groups. So we could use ammonia or amine, even though ammonia is technically inorganic, we could still end up with an um, organic product. So, that, so that's one thing I wanna draw your attention to. Another thing I wanna draw your attention to, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a bit, is that we have this two here, it takes two molar equivalents. So we need two moles of our nitrogen containing compound for every one mole of our acid, um, our carbonyl containing car compound in order to generate our amide. Sorry, turn off my phone. <laughs> okay, so then we're in both cases, we're going to generate an amide. And you can see there, right there is our amide linkage. And then we're also going to generate a salt. What the salt is, whether it's a ammonium chloride or alkyl ammonium chloride or a carboxylic acid salt, is going to depend on the reactant that we're using. So just generically writing how we prepare amides up here, rather than looking at these specifics, just kind of in words instead, we're going to use some type of carboxylic acid derivative or I think of them as relatives, something to provide a carbonyl group. And we're gonna react it with a nitrogen containing compound. And that can be the inorganic ammonia or an um, organic amine. And it's going to give us our amide with that amide structure here and then some form of a salt. And remember the word salt in chemistry is a generic term for an ionic compound. So that's like a positively charged ion attracted to a negatively charged ion. And you can see those here in our ammonium chloride and here in our 
carboxylate salt as well. So just to kind of reiterate some of that, amines or ammonia, so we can have our primary or secondary amines, can react with acid chlorides and or acid anhydrides to produce amides. And we're actually not going to be able to create anamide from a tertiary amine, but we can create it also from ammonia. So primary or secondary amines or our inorganic ammonia can react with acid chlorides and acid anhydrides to produce amides. We're going to get an amide and some form of a salt. And we're going to look at some more examples in a moment. Two molar equivalent of the nitrogen source are required in these reactions. And let's, let's look at why by focusing on a specific example. So here I have uh, my carbonyl group is being provided by this acid chloride. So it's an acid chloride. It looks a lot like a carboxylic acid with the hydroxyl group being replaced with a chlorine. And I'm going to react it with methanamine. So here's my, you know, one carbon. So that's where the meth comes from. And then it's an amine. So that's where the amine portion comes from. So let's take a look at how this happens and why it requires these two molar equivalents. So rather than have this 2CH3 and H2, let's actually replace it with, I'm going to draw it the other way too. Hmm. I think I want to do actual, like a little bit more structurally. Sorry. Thank you for your patience. Let's draw it a little bit more how it looks structurally rather than condensed. That's going to help my brain kind of see what's happening here. So there. And then I'm going to draw another one down here because I want to see what happens to these and why I need two of them. What do these two, what role do these two play in the formation of this amide? Well, one of these is going to come here to make the amide. So that's one of the reasons we need this. So one for the amide. So let's say that's this one. So it's going to come here and we're going to get a, a bond between the carbon, the carbonyl carbon of my acid chloride and the nitrogen of my um, amine here. But I actually have to make room for this bond to occur because amides aren't quaternary salts. You know, they, they have usually just three bonds off of my nitrogen. So I need to make room by losing this hydrogen. And so what happens there is this hydrogen is going to go down and bond here, leaving that electron behind and that's going to be what allows for this mechanism. And we don't learn about the mechanisms in this class. And I know that that can sometimes be frustrating to be like, why does this happen? But this hydrogen goes here, which is going to, instead of generating an amine or an amide, it creates an alkyl ammonium salt. So this then becomes, if I were going to expand the structure over here, now that it's gained that proton, it becomes this polyatomic ion, this methyl ammonium ion, which is going to be attracted because this chlorine is going to keep its electron too. And that's how we end up with still full valent shells, even though this guy left an electron. Um, this chlorine is going to leave with its electron and then we get that negative charge. And that's where our salt comes from. So one of the amines goes to making the amide and the other nitrogen containing compound goes to making the salt, one for the salt. So that one is, is going to actually take a hydrogen from the other amine. Takes a hydrogen ion, a proton from this amine that goes to make the amide. So notice here that we're down a hydrogen. We had two hydrogens bound to the nitrogen over here and we're down to one in our, in our amide structure. So that's how we end up making our amide and that's why we end up here with our chlorine ion or our um, chlorine salt from our ammonium group and from our chloride ion. And we see a really similar thing. Let's kind of look back at it. 
with our acid anhydride, where one of our ammoniums, ammonias, sorry, one of our ammo ammonias goes to bond here and break that, but it has to lose, has to give off a hydrogen ion to the other for, there, for that to occur. So we're going to get rid of that. And that's how we end up with that structure. And then here, what we have left, we have this carboxylate ion. And so then those two are going to be attracted to each other since this portion is going to be negative. And this is now going to be positive since it gained that proton. We end up with a carboxylate salt because of that opposite electrostatic charge and the attraction between them. So let's look at some practice problems. And as always, I'd encourage you to pause the video and attempt them on your own. So let's start with this first one. Using the reactants provided here, draw the structure of the amide product, which happens to be acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol. So let's take a look at what I have here. I recognize this as an acid anhydride. Oh, good Lord. And hydride. And this, even though it's a big complex structure, it's an amine. It's a primary amine. So an acid anhydride can react with an amine to make an amide. So I want to figure out what my amide structure, and it does tell me that, what my amide structure is going to be. So remember the general formula of an amide. That's what we want to end up having in some way. So what I like to do here is go, okay, one of these is going to become a carboxylic ion. Now, it doesn't ask me to identify that in this, but we could go ahead and figure out our other product here. Well, how should I draw this? Draw it the way they would, you know, they tend to flip them so that we can put our, put our two charges next to each other. So this is going to be my, my salt over here that's generated, even though that's not what it asks. It's good practice. So here is this portion of the acid and hydride is going to be this part of my amide structure. And it is going to bond with this nitrogen here in one of my two. Now that in order for that to happen, this nitrogen has to make room. So it has to lose a hydrogen. So rather than having two off of it, I'm only going to have one. And then the rest of the molecule actually is unaffected by this chemistry and stays the same. So I'm just going to draw that little phenol group the same. And there, and you can put the lone pair there if you want, that's my amide. Now, I know it doesn't ask for it, but we could go ahead and discuss then what happens to the other. So this second amine is going to take on an additional hydrogen. So, you know, adding a hydrogen ion to it. So it is going to become NH3 plus, because it's taken that proton. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'll draw my phenyl group up here so it's out of the way and doesn't look like it's bond, bound to my uh, hydrogens. So here is where my, um, my salt comes in. So it's a, got a carboxylate portion that's the leftover of the anhydride, and it's got an alkyl ammonium salt, which is that second molar ratio. So this is the active ingredient in Tylenol, and it's an amide. Looking at that second question, identify the compounds that might have reacted to synthesize this molecule if a chloride ammonium salt was produced. So this is kind of critical, because if a chloride ammonium salt was produced, then this had to have been an acid chloride that did my carbonyl portion. So I like to identify my amide linkage, and that tells me how to then divide up my molecule. So my acid chloride is, comes from this part, so it must have been this acid chloride to generate this one, two, three, carboxylic portion then with the chloride and it must have reacted then with NH2 1 2 3 4 5 
notice the hydrogen difference.